you. This is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. With your daily devotion for April the 8th. I'm ripping it. Look at that. Here, watch this. I'm going to show you a trick real quick. This is so cool. Watch this, right? Look, 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 right? Isn't that the coolest trick? Oh Proverbs chapter 7, and we're starting in verse 6, and it reads like this. At the window of my house, I looked out through the lattice, and I saw the simple. I noticed among the young men a youth who lacked judgment. Hmm. Okay. He was going down the street near the corner, walking in the direction of her house. You know what's going to get good. It continues on in verse 9 and it says this, at twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night was setting in, then came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute with crafty intent. She is loud and defiant. She's boisterous. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner, she lurks. Verse 13. She took hold of him and kissed him with a brazen face. She said this. Listen to what she says. I have fellowship offerings at home. Today I have fulfilled my vows. I think that's very interesting. I'm going to go over that point too. Verse 15. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you and I found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Hey, verse 18. Hey, Come, c c come with me. <laughs> come, let's drink of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves together with love. Verse nineteen. Look at it. I can't even breathe. Matt, breathe in, breathe out. Verse nineteen. My husband, he's not at home. <laughs> Golly, good grief. My husband, he's gone. Come on in. Let's party. Okay, look, at, look. All right, let me get over it. My husband, he's not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money, and he will not be home until the full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter. Did you hear what that said? Let me just read that again. That's, that's such a nice little verse right there. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose till the arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Let's go over a couple things here, okay? And here's the thing. I, I don't need to explain it because here's the thing. It's so straightforward. It's not even funny. And, and the warning about you being an ox led to the slaughter, that sobers a lot of people up. That, you know, there's another chapter in Proverbs where it says, hey, go ahead and follow her because here's the thing. As you do, she's going to walk you right into the pit of hell. Okay? I'm like, that's... And then I like another one in Proverbs, okay? It says, hey, can a man eat fire? I like what Job said, okay? He said this, why would I want to uproot my... My whole life, okay, looking at a maiden, meaning this, he's talking about looking at a woman and lusting in his heart after her. He says, why would I want to give up my whole life? Because see, Job understood the principle, okay? So the text says this, that she's dressed like a prostitute, but it's not saying that she is a prostitute, meaning what, what she wants to do. She wants to let that young man know, okay, uh, something. What does she want him to know? She wants him to know I'm available, meaning this, there's a, she's dressing a certain way, okay, to attract him, okay, because here's the thing, there are things that attract men, short skirts, lipstick, thigh highs, you know, certain women dressing a certain way, showing a little more of this, showing a little more of that, okay, and so she's putting it out there, meaning this, okay, so she, what is she doing? She's fishing. She's throwing, yeah, have you ever been fishing? And if you're in the man cave, you're like, man, please, come on, don't even ask the question. We're in the man cave, okay? Throwing that bait out there, okay? And what are you doing? You're going real slow. What are you doing? You're fishing. You're pulling on it. You know what I'm saying? What you're doing is you're playing with the fish, okay? What's that fish going to do? He's going to come. And when he does, what do you do? Bam! And he's in his mouth. You got him, okay? And that's what she's doing, okay? What is she doing? God's called us to be fishers of men. What is she doing? She's fishing for your soul. Because that's what the text says. This woman's going to take you to a place in, uh, down a road that you don't want to go down as a man. Especially if you're married. She is married. Look at the warnings in the text. In verse 9 it says it's at twilight. It's when it's starting to get dark. Friends, men are just ten times more susceptible 
at night. Why? Because the enemy of their souls is presenting more trash. Remember, Satan loves darkness. Sin loves darkness, okay? Those people who are uh, robbing, killing, thieves, murderers, okay? Uh, uh, deception, uh, worship of the devil, uh, so many cults. Why are they meeting at night? Because it's of the occult. It's of Satan. Light has nothing to do with darkness, okay? But when men are tempted, oftentimes it's not in the bright daylight. When they're thinking straight, it's at night. It's just something about the cloak of darkness. And here's the thing. We are so much more susceptible to temptation. Now, friends, just because you're tempted, okay, we're all tempted. Even Jesus was tempted, but he did not succumb to that temptation. It reminds me of King David when he was on the palace roof, and I did a devotion sometime back on that, okay? And he's walking to and fro. He's supposed to be with his men in war, but he's pacing, okay? He's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he's going back and forth on the roof, and he sees this woman. We know the woman to be who? Bathsheba, okay? And he checks her out. Here's the thing. Temptation? Yeah, okay. What did he need to do? He needed to go back into the house, okay? Turn the other way. Here's the thing. Bathsheba, who's to know what was in her heart? Many believe that she was doing this on purpose, kind of allowing her to be seen on the roof, because back in the Old Testament, that's where you showered, on top of the roof. She had to have known, okay, right there, that's where King David walks, and you know what I'm saying? Well, he comes out every night about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and kind of paces before bedtime. Maybe I'll just take a nighttime shower. We don't know that, but we do know this, that David looked, and he continued to look, and he, then he started imagining, so much so that the text says he commanded that his men bring her, bring her to me. You know what I'm saying? And then after the fact, before that ever happened, one of the one of servants said, he says, do you know who this woman is? He says, yeah, that's Bathsheba, okay? The wife of Uriah. He works for you, okay? He's in your army. Bring her, okay? Whatever your weakness is, you want to build up against that. You want to go to God. You want to confess that sin. You got, Lord, I'm weak in this area. I'm weak with women, Lord. I see one, I want her, okay? You need to say that. You need to be, because he already knows what's in your heart. You're not fooling God, okay? Roll with it. Share with your heart, Lord, I need help. I pray that you would help me in this direction. And then do what you know to do. What do you need to do? Here's the thing. If you're looking at trash on the internet, get rid of the internet. Okay? And, I, I, and here's the thing. It, it, and you're like, well, Matt, I, I need the internet. Throw off the computer. Oh, do whatever it takes. Here's the thing. The Bible warns us over and over and over again. Those people who engage in that for any length of time, they're not going to heaven. And a lot, and a lot of, oh, Matt, grace, mercy. Yeah, grace and mercy are there. They are. But Paul tells us three different times. And Romans tells us. Okay, Ephesians tells us. Galatians tells us. Okay, all these books written to the, for our edification and for our warnings, okay, are there and they say, don't engage in these things. All right, back to our story. So at nighttime, it seems like this. More men are susceptible to temptation, okay? If you've got your Bible, go to verse 14. Listen to this. I have fellowship offerings at home. Anything to get him to get there, okay, okay? Uh, today I fulfilled my vows. Let me explain what this is, okay? You meet a girl, she knows you're a Christian, okay? She knows, okay, because you're a man of integrity, you're not going to date her, you're not going to talk to her, you don't even want to be around her unless she's saved. So what does she do? She throws the grandma took me to church one time card out there. She's as lost as the day is long, and she's as loose as the day is long. Okay, and so she says this. She goes, y "You go, are you a Christian?" She goes, "Yeah, absolutely." But you know, I haven't been going to church as much as I, I needed to be. Meaning, she's gone once in her lifetime. She knows about God, but she doesn't have a personal relationship with God. That's what this text is talking about. Okay, and here's the thing: because what does she want to do? She wants to lure you in, and she can do it, men. If you allow it. She will do it, okay? That's why you have to cut it off in the beginning. When you see the red lipsticks, and you see the thigh highs, when you see the blouse, okay, when you see the short skirt, okay, here's the thing. You don't want to keep on stepping and going towards that when you know, here's the thing, you will be unequally yoked because if she doesn't belong to God, you're unequally yoked already. And here's the thing, until she gets right with God, you don't even want to date her. And I know there's a lot of men that probably aren't where they need to be with the Lord. They go, well, Matt, I don't know. She's pretty hot. I might want to date her. Maybe I want to date her and lead her to the Lord. Yeah, but in the meantime, and guess what she's doing? She's luring you down the wrong way. And most men don't have the, okay, they don't have the restraint to say what? No. Okay, they're saying, oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you don't want to go there. But listen, verse 14 again. Let me explain it. I have fellowship offerings at home. Today I fulfilled my vows. When a woman had her period, her period, I know you're like, what, Matt? What are you talking about? Okay, in the Old Testament, when a woman had her period for seven days, you weren't to touch her. But after the seventh day, you still weren't to touch her. There were seven more days that she was to be left alone. So for 14 days, she wasn't to be touched. But after that, okay, after the 14 days, then the Bible would, she would be what was called clean. 
Okay, she, you could fool around. Her husband could fool around, not this young youth that has no this sense. Woman, okay. okay, after her period, and after seven days after her period, would take two pigeons or two turtle doves, and she'd take them to the priest. One would be a burnt offering, the other one would be called what's called a sin offering. And, and, and that's what, what she's saying is, I have fulfilled my vows. What is she? So she's fulfilled, basically she's saying this, yeah, I went to church Sunday, but here, it's Monday, let's party. You know, let's get it on. Okay, it's, here's the thing, you know what it is? It's religion. It's, it's I, I went to church and I gave a few bucks and now I want to live like hell and thinking I'm going to heaven. It's just not the truth because of why. But first of all, because of God's word, God's spirit, what God's already spoken. But here's the thing, because here's the thing. When you're saved, you get a brand new heart. You're changed from the inside out. The old has passed away, become, behold, all things have become new. You're not the old person doing those same things, okay? But the whole world, religion, watch this, false culture religion, they love doing this stuff that they can do these things and they're they think my good will outweigh my bad oh i did this i helped the kids i, I did this i did this important event i'm a part of this I, I, and, and i see it everywhere look look i see it everywhere but this text talks about it meaning they think these things are going to exclude them from these things and it's just not the truth okay so she's saying hey i've i'm I'm not on my period. I've already paid my vows. I've done my fellowship offering. My husband's gone. Let's fool around because I'm going to be taken care of. I mean, I did all this. So if I have if I have an adulterous affair with you and we love each other all night and just enjoy ourselves, I'm okay and you're okay. You're not okay, okay? What is that? It's a lie from the pit of hell. This woman is trying to draw you away from what? From God. Okay, from his blessings, from his favor. And friends, here's the thing. Again, the text says she's lurking all over the place. She's on the street corner. She's on every road. Friends, you and I know that. She's at Walmart while we're shopping with our wives. She's at the auto parts store. What's the difference between those tires again? You see what I'm saying? These women are all over the place. Wherever you go, okay, listen, there's always going to be temptation, okay? Jesus said if you look upon a woman with lust in it, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart, okay? You don't want to do that, okay? You want to be steadfast. You want to be a man of integrity and bounce your eyes. Here's the thing. If I'm walking down the aisle and there's a woman coming right at me, okay, and she's dressed aggressively, that's a nice way of putting it, man, okay? And you know what I mean? I don't even need to describe it. What do I need to do? Just stare at her as I'm... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can some men do that? No. You don't want to pay attention to her. Look the other way. Look at the French fries. I mean, if you're, <laughs> look at the ice cream. Look at anything but her. I love Job in 31 1. He says, this, I made a covenant with my eyes. I'm not going to look at that anymore. Meaning this, I'm going to honor my God. I'm going to honor my wife. Okay, yeah, there are beautiful women. God made them. It's stupid to think that there's no hot women out there. There are, okay? But here's the thing. There should be no one hotter in the whole world than your wife, okay? And if you will start treating her like that, guess what? She will become that. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. I've seen it over and over and over again. And I know there's some guy out there saying, hey, man, I got it handled. You know, I play the field. You know what I'm saying? I, I do go to church on Sunday, but I haven't found a wife, so I'm just kind of dating. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just date godly women, okay? The Bible's very specific. Specific. It's very specific about don't be unequally yoked. So you don't want to be dating someone who's not like-minded, who doesn't belong to God. Okay, watch this. I can't tell you how many men that started dating such a woman to have their heart ripped out of their chest because they fell in love. They were engaged in sexual relations, okay? So they become one with this person, okay? Only for this person to leave them, okay? Because that's yesterday's news. I mean, here's the thing. Unless the woman that you're dating loves the Lord, she'll cheat on you. <laughs> You're like, what? Look at, look at. When I was looking for a wife, the first thing I prayed for is give me a godly wife, okay, Lord, that will love you more than she ever loves me and that will keep me on the straight and narrow and that will help me to live a godly life, okay? He gave me that woman, okay? She doesn't cheat on me, okay? But if you're dating a woman, okay, and she doesn't love the Lord, she's going to cheat on you. It's just, no, no, no. She's going to cheat on you. That's why you want a godly woman. You don't want a woman just says, I'm a Christian, I go to church. You want a woman who loves God, who absolutely has a relationship with the living God, okay? I was working at this company, a huge company, okay? And there was this outstanding salesman, okay? Bringing home about $300,000 a year, doing very well. And he was such a great guy, okay? I mean, he used to come up and he says, Matt, he used to come up and say this to me. He says, Matt, how do you do what you do when you do what you do? Because I want to do it too. Because <laughs> I was a salesman, but I was nowhere near where, there, where this guy was, okay? This guy finally got promoted from sales to management. Again, now he's making a half million dollars. Look, at half a million dollars a year, okay? But he's talking to these gals in quality control all the time. I see him always going down there, and I, I didn't know what was up, you know what I'm saying? 
What ends up happening is he's a married man, four beautiful children, the biggest house you could imagine, okay? Just a gorgeous house, okay? Uh, cars, all the things that you and I want. And there's nothing wrong with those as long as they're not before God, okay? That desire, that want, that need isn't before God. He has to be number one. He had it all, okay? He starts fooling around with this. That's called adultery. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He has a beautiful wife, but he thinks, uh, you know what I'm saying? What ends up happening? The boss of the company hears about it. He doesn't go for that, okay? Because he's a man of integrity. He's a godly man. He fires him, okay? What ends up happening? The wife hears about it. Okay, she ends up getting whoop of it. What does she do? She divorces him, okay? Uh, years later, I think it was about two years later, I meet up with him at another company. There he is, okay? He's still in sales. He's not even making 10% of what he was making. And he's a broken man. Look at, look at, look at. He's broken, okay? For a piece of tail, okay, for a, for, for, for a fling. It's just like the story in Proverbs 7, exactly, okay? It, it, it was just innocent talk, a little bit of flirting, a lunch here. Nobody knows. I'm not cheating on my wife, but here's the thing. He started contemplating. He started having imaginations. What if? I wonder what this would be like. You know, I've been with my wife for some time now. You know, I have four children. This seems exciting. An afternoon after work, okay, he says, Matt, you want to come over to the house? You know what I'm saying? Watch some TV, have some pizza. I thought, yeah, let's go. So, uh, I end up there and I'm standing in front of a gig it looks like a mansion. Okay, it's a huge, big lawn front and back and I'll never I'm telling you for the rest of my life I will never forget what I saw. It looked beautiful from the outside, but when I walked in there's these marble floors everywhere. There's a bar over here. There's all this stuff, but there's no furniture. When he was divorced, the wife she took 90% of everything. There was, yeah, there was a coffee table here and a, a little chair over here. And you know what he had? Yeah, this humongous house, this one, and you know, his living room kind of connected to his kitchen. And he has this monster kitchen in this living room and he has this one chair there. Out of this huge living room, and I mean, his living room was monstrous. He has one chair, like a lazy boy chair that he bought, and he has his little plasma there, okay? And he has a box, like a cardboard box where he puts his Coke there, okay? He so friends, we're sitting in his living room and he looks at me very seriously and he says, Matt, why did I do it? And I, I just asked him back. I says, why did you do it? You had everything. You have a beautiful wife. You had beautiful kids. You know what I'm saying? That his wife already got remarried. I mean, there's no getting back together by this time. This is a couple years down the road. And I, and, and I said this, why did you do it? You know what he said? She was available. She was like the woman in our story in Proverbs 7, okay? She was lustrous. She was outspoken. You know what I'm saying? The flirting. It drew him into the snare, okay? He's a destroyed man. Not, uh, here's the thing. He realizes this. Friends, here's the thing. Uh, men can fall and get back up and fall and get back up and fall and get back up. But here's the thing. When you had it all and you fall, it's harder. It's, it's doable. But here's the thing, that was the wife that God intended him to be with, okay? And for years, they had a perfect life. Not perfect, but an enjoyable life. Everything was working for him. He just wanted more. He thought grass would be greener on the other side. And friends, it's never. See, that's the allure of Satan. And those, again, that often comes what? at nighttime, in darkness, okay? And it, it's often so innocently. Friends, how many men do you think have fallen because they weren't in right relationship with God? And they didn't have any boundaries, okay? They hadn't drew a line in the sand and in their heart decide, I'm not going beyond this ever, okay? And they came across a woman who was willing, who was available, who was flirting, who was, here's the thing, was looking a certain way and it was attracting him and realized, he didn't realize what he was going into, but the Bible says he was going into to a slaughter, okay? Because when we do these things, when we engage in them mentally or physically, what we're doing is we're taking ourselves out of the favor of God and placing ourselves under the justice of God or the correction of God, depending if that person is saved or lost. Huge difference. So let me just share this. It's just not worth it. Uh, when God says no, okay, you're, you're taking yourself out of the blessings of God, the favor of God. You're placing yourself in a place where he has to correct you and chasten you. Also, you, you, you're exposing your body to another woman that you really know nothing about. What if you get a disease, okay? What if she gets pregnant? Oh, I'm on the pill. Please, do you believe her? She's fooling around with you. She knows it's wrong. She's breaking the commandments of God. She gets pregnant. Guess what you're doing for the next 18 years? You're supporting a child that you can't hardly see, and she's going to raise them the way she wants to raise them. Don't do it, okay? What does God say? It says this, 
the marriage bed is undefiled, meaning God has made a way for your sexual needs to be met. What is that? It's in marriage, okay, to your wife. Sure. One of the things I learned is this, okay? Satan's always coming along and trying to give a substitute, okay, for a legitimate need. Meaning this, men have a need for sex. They want, they desire it. They want to fool around, okay? God says it's in the marriage bed. It's with your wife, okay? But Satan wants to come along and offer you something other than that. And that's through all of life. He's always putting these things before us, okay? But they're less than. Okay, realize, and, and men never think it out. I mean, here's the thing. If King David was to realize what it was going to cost him by having a, a, an affair with Bathsheba, okay, he would have never done it. Friends, if you look at the consequences of that one decision, okay, and friends, I can think of so many people in my life, men that were living their life, they were so happy, they, they were being blessed, okay, and they made one decision after another decision in the wrong direction, started engaging in things that they knew they shouldn't have been engaging in, started flirting. Friends, just don't do these things, okay? And where did it lead them? One decision led to the next, to the next. It's the dominoes. When you hit one, they just start going, and it gets to a place where you can't even stop yourself. You're so addicted to this woman. Okay, you know what you are? You're a puppet on a string. Men, listen to this, okay? That woman has charge over you. She can blink her eyes, lick her lips, and here's the thing, you'll do anything she says, okay? And here's the thing, all the time you're sinning against the person who loves you the most. You don't want to go down that avenue, okay? And like the text said, these women are all over the place. But let me just put a warning out there, okay? There's men like this too. If there's a woman watching this, there are men out there that are very, very good looking. They're charming, okay? It's the same this thing, This problem okay? isn't just with men. It's with women too. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, watch it. The warning goes both ways. I don't want you to think it's just the man, okay? No, it just seems like men are so more susceptible to this, okay? Because they have a, a, a different way of thinking about sex than women oftentimes do, okay? And so they're, they're drawn, but it's both ways, okay? Women and men are both tempted in in the same manner. Let's do it God's way, okay? Hey, I hope this helped you out. Remember, hey, hey, hey be men of integrity. This is Matt from the Man Cave. <laughs>